So a few of you have been requesting me to do a video on fragrances that smell like baby powder. Who knew you liked fragrances that smelled like this? Well, you know, I thought about some of my fragrances smelling like baby powder, but I never really put thought into it until this question came up several times. I've received multiple emails and a few comments here and there. I thought I'd go through my fragrances and see what smells like baby powder. And I've got 15 here today. 15 fragrances that smell like baby powder. If you're curious to learn about them, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. And yes, today I'm talking about fragrances that smell like baby powder. Do you like this type of a fragrance? Of course, they're all powdery fragrances. And for me, some musky fragrances do go powdery. Well, a lot of them do, most of them do, but some of them do end up smelling like baby powder. And so I thought those would be the first fragrances I would actually look uh, up and then see what the, if they do remind me of baby powder. And sure enough, many do, but you know, some, I think it's mostly musks and or powdery notes or iris that comes up to remind us of uh, baby powder. Anyway, these fragrances to me remind me of baby powder. There's a lot more out there in the world I'm sure you've smelled in addition to these or not these, but either way I'm going to let you know what the fragrances I have in my collection that remind me of baby powder are, but before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. The first fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is a fragrance I had recently picked up and instantly it reminded me of baby powder. It's a fragrance focusing on musk, here it is, Musk Shamal. Great, great fragrance from Armani Privé, but to me, it smells like a very luxury baby powder. Probably something like Amplified and more expensive than something like, you know, Johnson's baby powder. But really, literally, like when I wear this one, it's powdery and it reminds me of baby powder, just the luxury form of it. But Musk Shamal, a unisex fragrance, is focusing on musk, lots of musk, with aldehydes, amber, vanilla, cedar, rose, jasmine and citruses. The citruses are fairly light, but there is some uh, freshness with the citruses in here. It's there to give us, you know, the freshness that we get from citruses, but it's mostly about the musk, aldehydes, and you know, vanillic touches. There is a vanilla in here and amber. It doesn't get overly sweet. And also there's that rose that comes in, gives us a little bit of a rosiness, but uh, it doesn't like fully bloom into full on rose. But overall, the whole composition is quite gorgeous and it smells really, really great and totally reminds me of baby powder. So the first fragrance that you should look into if you're looking to uh, find fragrances that remind you of baby powder is Armani's Musk Shamal. Armani's fragrances from the Privé collection are pricey so get a sample of this one, don't blind buy. Either way, that is the first fragrance. The second fragrance is a fragrance from the house of Nivea or Nivea. This is Nivea Eau de Toilette. This one I discovered in Germany from the Nivea boutique when I was there many years ago. And then I bought uh, the fragrances. Then I went back and I bought a few more. This literally is like baby powder. Of course, if you're used to their lotions, you kind of have that smell anyway. I mean, you're familiar with that smell. And basically what they've done is bottled that lotion smell into a fragrance form. Sadly, this is not distributed here in this country. I don't think Nivea or Nivea is a very uh, sought after brand here in this country, more in Europe but definitely in Germany. Uh, it's about 25, 30 euros, maybe even cheaper than that. I can't remember exactly. Very, very inexpensive, but it's a 30 ml bottle. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's around, I, I remember it launching for around 30, but I think it's gone down. I, I think you, I've seen it for around 18 something, but it's very, very inexpensive with lots of powdery notes, sandalwood, freesia, ylang ylang, lily of the valley lavender, rose, bergamot, mandarin, but literally it reminds me of baby powder or that, you know, Nivea lotion that you're so used to putting on. But as I said, it's not easy to find this one here. If you can find it, it will be great. It's definitely worth it because it is so inexpensive. But I think because people bring it here from other countries to sell, there's probably going to amplify the price and make it higher. Either way, check it out, Nivea. If you're traveling to Germany or somewhere 
uh, in Europe, you might run into this, definitely get a bottle because it's totally worth it. So Nivea EDT, the second fragrance I'm going to talk to you about today. The next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is from the house of Juliet Has a Gun. This is Musk Invisible. All of these are musks, but they're reminding me of baby powder. This one to me is literally full of musk and cotton flower and uh, a few other kind of like light floral notes and things like that. But it's just really reminding me of baby powder. It sprays on powdery, lightly floral, dry, a little ambery, and a little woody, but very, very sexy and clean uh, and very, very cozy as well. So it's completely different than Nivea, whereas Nivea is not a musk. Uh, there's no musk mention of it. It's most powdery notes. Here, you definitely experience the powderiness from actual musk in a fragrance with that cotton flower. A great scent. I actually really, really like Juliet Has a Gun as a House. Very different but unique fragrances. And this Musk Invisible totally smells like baby powder. Anyway, number three, and this is not a ranked video, Juliet Has a Gun, Musk Invisible. We're going to the house of Diptyque next. We've got two fragrances back to back that remind me of baby powder. First one is Fleur de Peau, this one right here. The least of the fragrances that reminds me of baby powder, but still it reminds me of baby powder. This is a very musky fragrance. Definitely loads of musk with aldehydes and iris and ambrette. You also have carrot, ambergris, sandalwood, rose, pink pepper, angelica. It's a very, very sexy powdery fragrance and also musky and vegetal. So the combination is beautiful. It's a little close to the skin uh, and also reminds me of a few other fragrances like Le Labo's Aldehydes, Chanel Number no. 18, uh, Atelier Materi's uh, Bois d'Ambrette. But this is a unique creation on its own. It's definitely very, very sexy and definitely powdery. It's definitely reminding me of baby powder, but not as much as the one after this one from Diptyque. But either way, Fleur de Peau, uh, definitely a fragrance that uh, reminds me of baby powder. But the next one, Orphean, one of their latest fragrances, definitely really reminds me of baby powder, but a sexy baby powder. This one has lots of powdery notes, juniper berries, jasmine, cedar, and tonka. Both of these have light sweet touches, but this to me, in comparison to Fleur de Peau, is not vegetal. Fleur de Peau to me has vegetal touches, and the ambergris and the angelica remind me or give me that vegetal -y touch, whereas this one to me is more metallic and a little more sharp with the powderiness, uh, but definitely really powdery experience and also very, very sexy uh, combination or composition uh, together to create one beautiful fragrance, but very, very powdery and one that reminds me of baby powder. Wonderful, wonderful fragrance. Really love wearing this one actually, and it smells really, really great. It sits closer to the skin, so people have to get a little closer to smell you, but definitely if you like the idea of a uh, baby powder and fragrances or fragrances that remind you of baby powder, check out Orphean from Diptyque. Two fragrances from the same house back to back. This next fragrance is a fragrance that I discovered recently that I really instantly loved. The smell is really, really great. It has familiar smells to me. Reminds me of fragrances from uh, back in the day when I smelled when I was a little kid around mom, grandma, and things like that. This is from the house of Guerlain. This is Lure Bleu, this one right here. This is a woman's targeted release but it really, really smells great. It is a great fragrance that reminds me of heliotrope, almondy, powdery with iris, light vanillic benzoin touches in there as well. But in the end, it reminds me of baby powder or some kind of a very luxury, definitely luxury baby powder, but like also a very luxury soap. Really intensely powdery here with the fragrance, iris, heliotrope, vanilla, benzoin, sandalwood, carnation, violets, cloves, neroli, ylang ylang, tonka, and musk. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Very, very classic. Major, major uh, nostalgia about this. Not the fragrance itself, but the smell. Smell just reminds me of fragrances I've smelled when I was a little kid. Because I was always very sensitive to smells, and I liked good smells. And this reminds me of something I remember as a kid or a child smelling a good smell that I really, really like. Great fragrance, powdery, and uh, a little soapy as well. This is Guerlain Lure Bleu. Check that out if you don't know it. But the next fragrance I'm talking about is from the house of Serge Luton. This is Claire de Musk. This to me instantly smelled like baby powder when I first smelled it. This is definitely not similar to Musk Kublai Khan from Serge Luton's. This one is definitely 
not animalic, but still reminds you of a uh, musk. It's a little cleaner musk, but definitely has the baby powdery elements that I like in musky fragrances uh, that smell like baby powder. But musk, iris, neroli, and bergamot are what's credited for this one, and it's mostly about the musk in uh, combination with the iris and a little bit of the neroli. The bergamot in here is uh, not necessarily overwhelming, so it's basically the musk playing with the iris and neroli. Neroli adds a little bit of a, a beautiful um, citrus floral touch to it, but the overall composition is beautiful and it reminds me of baby powder. Very, very beautiful and uh, cozy as well. And one thing I forgot to mention about these fragrances, the fragrances that smell like baby powder, they're major cozy. I think there's a coziness factor about baby powder. Maybe it's uh, something that we remember as kids, parents using it on us or something. I don't know, but I get a major coziness when I think of baby powder and, of course, when I smell it. Either way, Serge Lutens Claire de Musk number seven uh, today in this video. Next fragrance, going to the house of Mise en Cire. This is Luxury, this one right here. And this particular fragrance to me is a very luxurious baby powder smell, but re literally reminding me of baby powder like a great transparent baby powder that has been, you know, you know, fluffed around, and you could see its little, uh, you know, particles rise in the air, and that's kind of what it reminds me of. But this is from the house of uh, Mise en Cire, created by Alberto Morias. A luxury features notes of iris, white musk, orange blossom, bergamot, ambroxan, vanilla, benzoin, tonka beans. So all these notes to me come off powdery. So we've got a kind of a very airy powdery experience, baby powder it totally comes to mind. It is all, all about the iris and the white, white musk working together here. Again, orange blossom, neroli, similar thing, and I think the whole composition smells fantastic. Really literally reminds me of baby powder. Mise en Cire, luxury, a great cozy powdery, baby powdery fragrance. This next one's a men's targeted release, but it, even though it reminds me of almonds, still kind of reminds me of baby powder. This is Pegasus from the house of Parfums de Marly, a very powdery fragrance for uh, men. It's vanilla, bitter almonds, sandalwood, heliotrope, lavender, jasmine, amber. So in the end, it's kind of like an aromatic, powdery experience. Sweet and bitter almondy, but definitely reminds me of baby powder, like a different take on baby powder or something very, very unique. But in the end, when I wear it, all its powderiness kind of like takes me back to, uh, not when I was a baby, because I don't remember, but when I was taking care of my brother, uh, my sister especially, when they were young and, you know, my mom had to use... Uh, Johnson's baby powder on them. Either way, if you like the idea of an almondy take on a baby powdery fragrance, check out Pegasus. And even though this is male targeted, I think it's totally unisex. Women can totally pull this one off. Either way, Pegasus from Parfums de Marly. That's the ninth fragrance I'm talking about today. So we've got a few inexpensive fragrances back to back. First one going to the house of Elisa Ashley. This is Musk. Anybody know this one? I featured it in a Musk fragrances video last year. And this is a unisex uh, fragrance. Obviously, you can see the, the sex symbols right there. But this, uh, to me, again, it's a very, very cozy, musky experience with light, sweet touches under there and floral and aromatic touches as well. It reminds me of real musk and then it doesn't, like the true, authentic deer musk. So it kind of has those uh, sexy uh, touches in there but then again, it's not really using that stuff. I don't think it is. Uh, at least it shouldn't. Uh, but it definitely has those touches. And then, of course, the baby powdery touches as well surrounding it to remind me of baby powder. But in the end, this features musk, tonka beans, iris, oak moss, ylang ylang, jasmine, geranium. But a wonderful fragrance, wonderful creation. Very, very inexpensive. I think there's a lot of history with this fragrance. I've read when I speak about it, people say, oh, I used to wear it. I used to, my mom used to wear it. She introduced me to it, things like that. But definitely a fragrance that's very, very musky and powdery and one that reminds me of baby powder. So Elisa Ashley's Musk. Check it out if you uh, don't know that one. And even though it's called Elisa Ashley, that's the brand name. They've got multiple, multiple fragrances. It's a unisex fragrance, so men and women can totally wear that one. This next one's male targeted, but again, it reminds me of baby powder. It's very powdery, musky. White musk for men from the house of the body shop. Very inexpensive as well. You can totally liberally spray this stuff 
like baby powder because baby powder can be inexpensive so you can wear this like that and totally reminds you of uh, baby powder in the end it's lots of musk with sandalwood vetiver tonka beans jasmine lavender and geranium so the vetiver lavender geranium take it into a more masculine territory but then you've got the musk sandalwood and tonka beans with jasmine that kind of give it the more unisex appeal of their uh, focus with the notes but it's a great great fragrance very very inexpensive but also very very light so you got to be warned about that but you can get this for about $15 sometimes for sale uh, you can keep one in the office you can keep one at the house spray away and at the end of the day you can replenish throughout the day you can replenish and smell like this really really cozy musky baby powdery fragrance the body shop white musk for men once again it's male targeted and I think women can totally pull this one off I've heard women wear this one there is a women's white musk I don't really know much about it but I absolutely love and swear by white musk for men for uh, from the house of the body shop so the next fragrance I'm talking about is Zadig and Voltaire's this is her anybody know this one this one's a milky lactonic fragrance and nutty and everything but when I smell it it reminds me of baby powder but the more creamy milky kind of ba baby powder I don't know if that uh, exists but I think it does but this uh, Zadig and Voltaire's this is her has lots of sandalwood with whipped cream cashmere wood chestnuts pink pepper silk with blossom and jasmine and in the end there is a nut nuttiness there and of course there's a, a woods in there lots of woods but to me this wear is very very creamy creamy and milky because sandalwood although some people smell sandalwood uh, the creamy kind to be shaving like wood shavings I don't get that myself here I get the creamy milky variety and it makes sense to combine sandalwood with, with cream to give us a more of a kind of lactonic experience it's delicious but very very powdery and because of that it reminds me of baby powder so Zadig and Voltaire's this is her check that out it is feminine it's for women if you like the idea of milky lactonic powdery baby powdery fragrances check that out you should like it this next Next fragrance is from the house of Molten Brown. This is Milk Musk here. And Milk Musk is definitely powdery and also sweet and a little woody as well and definitely can smell the ambroxan in here because it's got that but it's loads of musk and even though this particular version there's no credit of milk as a note or lactonic notes uh, the EDP does have that and I think in the EDP it's coming from the sandalwood because it smells like wood shavings and there's a milkiness as well but this one uh, there's no woods and it's not a lot of woods it's fruits musk tonka vanilla together and lightly with the cedar wood but the overall experience is kind of like a milky fruit compote but in the end it's powdery so it reminds me of a kind of a sweet fruity baby powder experience you know I really like this particular fragrance I wanted more milk from it though I don't get it and in com you know if you compare it to the EDP of this one it's not necessarily very baby powdery like this one to me is so that's why I'm featuring milk musk and EDT not the EDP but let me know if you've sampled this I've spoken a lot about it last year do you like it do you have it and do you, does it remind you of baby powder too anyway molten browns milk musk EDT that's number 13 now I featured this particular fragrance last week of this is Parfums de Nicolai's Poudre de Musk brand new launch definitely reminds me of baby powder uh, it, it's it's lots of musk with aldehydes and sandalwood and rose and hawthorn those are the notes that are credited here but in the end it wears like baby powder with light rosy touches and you know woods and things like that coming in it's very airy it's powdery and again it really literally reminds me of baby powder with a little bit of a rosy touch very very cool fragrance I really like this one it's new and they have musk to begin with they have a musk intense and actually this is Poudre de Musk Intense as well so this is in the Intense series but again it's very very powdery with the musk in here and all the uh, aldehydes and sandalwood and to me it wears like I'm smelling baby powder really delicious fragrance so check that out Parfums of Nikolai Poudre de Musk Intense and the last but not least this is actually the the most baby powdery is fragrance uh, I've spoken about this one I don't speak about this house too much though this is from the house of Lorenzo Villarezzi this is Taint de Neige this one right here in the EDP concentration baby powder literally this is the most baby powdery fragrance as soon as I put my nose to it it literally is is baby powdery and although it reminds me of this a little bit too both of them like that's why I'm starting with musk shamal and ending with uh, 
Tink de Neige because these two are the ultimate and really, really smelling like baby powder. But this one features notes of heliotrope, musk, jasmine, rose, tonka beans, ylang ylang. Very, very powdery, very, very intensely musky powdery, and of course, light rosiness. There's sweetness in there and floral touches as well, but it's the ultimate, ultimate in, uh, fragrance smelling like baby powder. Either way, Lorenzo Villarezzi, Tank de Neige, uh, that's the last fragrance I'm talking about. This was not a ranked video, but I did start with number one, Musk Chamal, being really, really intensely baby powdery and ending with Tank de Neige. But uh, also, once again, I want to reiterate that these are definitely cozy. There's a coziness about baby powder that comes with the smell that I like about them. That They would be also perfect to wear fall. Fall is the time I want coziness a lot because of the cold that's starting to brew in the air. Either way, these are the fragrances I'm discussing today. Let me know what your thoughts are on these fragrances. Which fragrances do you wear that remind you of baby powder? Let me know. Put some comments down. Uh, I'd like to find out. I want to find out what other fragrances are out there that remind uh, you guys of baby powder. But let me know if you've tried these fragrances. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Or now that you've watched this video, have you wanted to sample them? Uh, let me know. Put some comments down. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>